to Let's Talk Kentucky. I'm your host and moderator, Sherelle Roberts, and we're here with the Let's Talk team on this fun Friday. It's Susan Mills, Kim Dixon, and Lisa. Hi. Hey, y'all. Hello. Hey, y'all. Okay, now, I have. A, I just want to start out by picking a bone, a little bone to pick. Uh-oh. Uh -huh. Um, why are we at Chocomania today? Like I Dylan know, seriously. I mean, what? I heard Chocomania. I what? What? <laughs> <laughs> Evidently, there's a Chocomania going on in what city? In, in Georgetown. George in Georgetown. In Georgetown. Yes. It's it's the Festival of the Horse, and uh, it's a huge festival this weekend, and he was there downtown with Chocomania, one of the businesses there. Oh, my gosh. The food looks fantastic. They have all desserts in there. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I heard put, Lisa put up her fist, was like, if you don't bring some back. <laughs> I was flexing a little bit, trying to intimidate. That is amazing. So, Chocomania. <laughs> Next year? Uh -huh. We will be there, uh -huh. okay? Yes. Oh my goodness. All right. <laughs> so also up in Talk of the Town, it does not involve food, which makes me slightly sad, but uh, that's okay. Um, so we have a sports map that, oh. yay, Hannah in our newsroom made. So shout out to Hannah. Yeah. But it's showing us all of the places where you can do sports betting. And so in our know. viewing area, so and outside of our viewing area, so you'll see, if you check it out, our viewing area is kind of like in the middle of the state, all the way down to almost the Tennessee line, and then up to almost northern Kentucky. We only have about two places, two or three places where you can do sports betting right now mm -hmm. in our viewing area. But see, it's scattered all over, mm -hmm. so people yeah. are going to be able to do this, and when it's when it's all said and done, there'll be 12 places. Okay. Oh, wow. So people okay. are about this. Yeah, they it's, are. Yeah. So those are up and going right now? Yes. Okay. So uh, the, in person. In mm -hmm. person. Right. Those are like existing venues like the Red Mile mm -hmm. and I places like that where you can go in. They uh -huh. were already doing like historic horse racing. And now, but seeing it on the map, the visualization is very cool because you can see mm -hmm. where it is mm -hmm. right. and where it isn't. Right. It is pretty right. scattered, pretty if evenly. Mm -hmm. I know, so too. Mm -hmm. Starting out, I think that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. And yeah. this map, is it on our website? Is she posting it's it on the website? It's on our website. It's on our social media. So, yes, if you want right. to go see it, you can go do that good question, Lisa. Awesome. <laughs> I gotta know where I need to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa's like, stop one, Chaco Media. <laughs> stop two, gotta go bed. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Make it It's gonna be a fun weekend. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just gambling chocolate drunk. Just <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then finally, you guys, the election is still months away. But already, $50 million have been spent on political campaign commercials in the Kentucky governor's race. I'm over it already. Mm -hmm. Like, politics is my favorite thing. Like, I love <laughs> it. Yes, we know, Sherelle. <laughs> we know. I mean, nerd. election, I am such a nerd. Election day <laughs> is like Christmas for me. Every election, <laughs> I get so excited. But I am over these commercials. Yes. Because the majority of them, if you've been watching, have been negative. And so, I just want to clarify, a little, little teaching time. Not all political commercials are actually made by the campaigns for the person the commercial is for. Right. A lot of these campaign or a lot of these campaign commercials are made by PACs or political action committees. And if you've got money and if you can fill out a little paperwork, you can make a PAC. And so what happens is these PACs who are not affiliated with the campaigns and aren't even allowed to communicate with the campaigns can make ads. Well oh. a PAC affiliated with Senator Rand Paul is getting into the governor's race, and it just put out an ad attacking Governor Bashir. And in the ad, it featured a video with of the governor with his young daughter. Mm -mm. Now people are fired up. They say kids should never be used as a tool in political campaign ads. A spokesman for Governor Bashir's campaign said, quote, there are lines that shouldn't be crossed even in the midst of a tough political campaign. And using your opponent's young daughter in an attack ad is one such line. What do y'all think? I agree wow. with yeah. that. I agree yeah. with it. Yeah. I mean, anytime you use a child in a commercial, mm -hmm. you need to have the parents sign off on that. Right. Bingo. You know, right. and they obviously didn't do that. And so it's scary. I would be scared mm -hmm. as the governor, too, yeah. with yes. my, the face and the likeness of my daughter in the commercial. He's been through this yeah. before when his son was stalked at a baseball game. Oh, Kim. Mm. 
I didn't know about that I one. I didn't either. There was someone following them around for a couple baseball games. Oh my oh, gosh, wow. that's awful. Children are off limits, period. Yes, I, I don't care which side of the aisle, yeah. I don't care what the politician is, what they have to say, mm -hmm. they are off limits. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what I thought about too? Young folks um, are under so much pressure already by social media and their peers mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And so now she's just out there in a commercial and everybody is seeing it. That's like a lot of pressure and it's so unfair, yeah. it is, you know? And then it's not like it's a happy commercial. It's a commercial attacking her father. Right, because a lot of politicians will put their family photo or something in the commercial or they'll show them walking along a fence line or something like that as a family. but they're the ones that agreed to do yes. that right. for their campaign yes. commercial. This is, you know, someone attacking him from another campaign, and it's really, you know, through the pack, and it's unfortunate that that happened. Yeah, and it's not a flattering photo or video of either one of them either. I mm -hmm. just, oh, my heart goes out to that. Being a kid is already hard enough. You right. do not need this kind of drama. And honestly, I feel this way about adult children of politicians, too. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. feel like you should bring adult children or really any family member into it unless it's directly affecting their politics, mm -hmm. honestly. So that yeah. leads us to our poll question of the day. <laughs> Are political commercials taking it too far with these attacks? We want to hear from you. You can go vote on our poll right now at WTVQ.com forward slash vote. Or pick up your phone, scan that little white thing, boop, right there, and let us know. We're going to have this up throughout the show, and we'll check on it on the end of the show. I mean, we want to hear from you guys. I don't think anybody likes the negative ads. No. Right? No. I'm over Unless it. Unless you're just like, oh, that was super funny well, they every don't now tell and me then. anything. But, yeah. yeah. They don't tell me anything about what the candidate is about. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But even though we don't like them, I think, I want to know, do people think they're going too far? Because mm -hmm. you cannot like something, and then something Absolutely. can be going over the line. So yes. that's what we want to know. Please vote and let us know. We'll discuss more at the end of the show, but coming up after the break, Got a question. Is it a great tradition or out of style? Should women have to change their names when they get married? Let's talk about it. Let's Talk Kentucky is brought to you by Critchfield Meats. If you've been injured, Morgan & Morgan makes starting a claim easy. You don't even have to leave your couch. Done. Just dial pound law or go to forthepeople.com to get started. Now back to this. What will you experience at the Kentucky Horse Park? Watch live shows and see unique breeds. Meet racing champions and derby winners. Explore equine history. Up on board. And get in the saddle. The gates are open and the horses are waiting. Plan your visit at kyhorsepark.com. The Festival of the Horse returns to Georgetown, Kentucky with the Best in the Bluegrass, September 8th through the 10th. Enjoy a weekend of parades, craft vendors, music, and family fun. Whoa! Big news! DraftKings Sportsbook is coming to Kentucky. You'll be so dialed into every play that you forget to eat your wings. You made my wings cold, DraftKings. <sighs> Flailing your arms like you can disrupt the free throw. Miss fool! And a home run will have you crying like it's the birth of your child. I'm so happy. DraftKings Sportsbook is coming to Kentucky. New customers, download the app now to get 200 in bonus bets when we go live. Because life's more fun when you're in on the action. The crown is yours. Yeah. When Daniel Cameron says he absolutely supports bringing back Matt Bevan's ruthless Medicaid plan, Cameron threatens to take away coverage from over 95,000 Kentuckians and punish working parents. This sounds very similar to something that Governor Matt Bevan tried. Well, absolutely. But when Cameron said he'd back Bevan's war on teachers and take taxpayer money from public schools to give to private schools instead, he'd punish Kentucky's kids. Cameron's absolutely wrong for Kentucky. Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Talk Kentucky. It is time for the countdown conversation. And it's a Friday one, which means it's gonna be extra spicy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> extra spicy like the one chip challenge. We're gonna talk about that. Okay, 
So first up, so a new survey shows that more women, an increasing number of women, are electing not to change their names when they get married. Whether they're getting married to a man or a woman or somebody with another gender identity, they are not choosing to change their names. And this research says that younger women are less likely to change their names. Uh, women who are more liberal on the ideological political spectrum are less likely to change their names. And then there were some different racial rankings. And then, um, so they said like Hispanic women are like the least likely because they have a different naming conventions mm -hmm. for their last names um, than white women, black women. So yeah, it, it just, it's interesting. Should we, is it, is it old fashioned? Do we not need to change our names anymore? Is it too much drama? Where's everybody with it? I didn't change my name. And um, I was already 44 when I got married and I had a lot of bank accounts. I had a lot of all library account, the doctor's accounts, all these accounts that I didn't know if I would be able to remember to change all of them. And it was gonna get real confusing for me. And um, you all know I'm adopted and my parents had to work really hard years to get me a last name, mm -hmm. you know, to be able oh. to make that happen. The naturalization process, all of that. Mm -hmm. And um, that's special to me. Yeah. It is special to me. Now, I will answer to Kim Lucky, which is my husband's last name. You know, mm -hmm. that's fine, but I didn't legally change it. Right. Uh -huh. I clearly didn't change it on this show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> sure. So I'm down with women keeping their names if you want to, because I know the history behind this whole naming convention. Like, when you're born, you're your father's property. And then after you get married, you're your husband's property. So you keep the name of the man whom with you are connected. That's how we have our naming convention in mm -hmm. Western society. I don't like that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like it. You don't it. want to be somebody's property? I don't like it. I don't, I don't like no. it. No. Um, so, <laughs> but I will say that if I was in a situation where the guy was going to be like super sad or offended, then maybe I would tack it on. Yeah. Well, you know what? It is old fashioned. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it is an old fashioned concept. I, th I think, it, especially today's world, I think we're kind of, as a society, we're moving toward that, especially uh, toward, away from that, should I say, um, as a whole with women. Um, I think, though, that sometimes with the woman, though, she's she may be a single mom that you know has a child and wants to continue keeping the same name as oh. the child. Mm -hmm. So there, there's reasons for it. I don't think that the so society in general should think that we're just being bullied headed and we want mm -hmm. to keep our name and being selfish I think there's other reasons always involved with that yes yeah, season absolutely you? I just think it's whatever floats your boat I mean mm, you yeah. know I, I don't have a problem with either one um, I obviously changed my name to Mills um, and I slid my former last name as my middle name yes. because that's what my son's last name is mm -hmm. and so I wanted to keep a part of that for him mm -hmm. but really it's it's do your own thing yeah. right you right. know mm -hmm. I see it both ways yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah. Yeah. Call yourself what you want to call yourself. Yeah. <laughs> All Still right. Love yes. <laughs> Next up, don't say pro life. And I'll explain. Republican strategists are exploring a shift away from this phrase pro life after they saw consistent election day losses and referendum losses after Roe versus Wade was overturned. So recently at a closed door meeting of Senate Republicans this week, the head of a super PAC had a poll and he said people do not like this terminology pro-life. They think that means that we're anti-abortion. We have to find another way to say this. So um, they're over there cooking up new ways to say it and they say, we, we gotta stop saying pro-life, y'all. We just need to explain our stances, but stop saying pro-life because people don't like it. So they're coming up with a new way to say they're pro-life. So it's the it's a different name that they're looking for, but it's still the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I don't understand this, this true. whole thing. Like, I have we lost our minds? It, it's no matter how you say it. Yes, continue to educate people on what this means. Yes, but the name can still change. Right. Or, I mean, still stay the same. No, you know? I totally agree. <laughs> I mean, I think. The name is about as nice of a name as you can possibly have. Yes. Pro yes. life, very positive, very, you know. So I don't think it's the name that's causing the issues. So just yeah, my thought. So much. Right. Um, and I think that the pro life, that is, that is a polite, kind way to put it. 
But oftentimes, this is just pro-birth what these people want, push to have the baby born, but not provide the resources for people who need help. Mm -hmm. And that's the root of what's going on here, but the change in name not gonna make any difference. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah. right. Now, now, for pro-life voters, I bet you they're gonna feel some type of way about this. Mm -hmm. Because since the 1970s, the pro-life mm -hmm. lobby has been working with the GOP, with Republicans, and they said, if you get us in office, we will get you Supreme Court justices that will overturn Roe versus Wade. If you get us in office, if you elect President Trump, he will appoint federal judges that will get uh, Roe versus Wade overturned. And they worked at it and worked at it and worked at it for 50 years, and they gave their pro-life voters exactly what they promised them. And now that they see that the majority of Americans don't like it, they're ready to turn their backs on their pro-life voters. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And it makes me wonder, did they ever care about it in the first place? Mm -hmm. Or were they just trying to get those votes, votes and get into the power? Votes. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. That's what I think, too. <laughs> but if I was pro-life voters, I would be upset. I would, yes. How dare you write us for 50 years mm -hmm. and then be like, eh, we don't want to talk about that anymore. Yeah. Let's change the name. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be the name. <laughs> I'm telling you. Just shake our heads. <gasps> Whew, we didn't get to talk about the one chip challenge, so we're going to have to talk about that. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna bring that back in what's trending, because we got <laughs> to talk about that. We're going to bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, stay with us. Coming up after the break, our guest at the table is Amanda Jason with Elizabeth Village. Let's Talk Kentucky is brought to you by Critchfield Meat. ET's kicking off season 43. Hi, ET. Backstage at the VMAs, Matthew McConaughey's <laughs> Surprise and Kristen Cavallari's Love Life. Why do you think I'm so single? Monday on ET. Tonight at 7 on ABC 36. Hi, I'm Lee Trevino. Most people know me for winning six PGA championships. With my bum knee, I started thinking I was going to have to trade my club in for a cane. Then I discovered Arthritis Knee Pain Centers. Arthritis Knee Pain Centers has cutting edge image guided treatments that place a natural lubricating gel directly into your affected joints. This FDA approved non-surgical procedure replenishes the missing cushioning fluid to provide you with pain relief, comfort, and improved mobility without surgery or downtime. It's covered by Medicare and most private insurance. We've helped relieve the pain for thousands of our patients. Arthritis Knee Pain Centers relieve my pain and change my life. They got me back in the game again, baby. Call them now and schedule your free knee pain assessment. Get the pain relief you deserve today. In Lexington, call 800-963-0478. That's 800-963-0478. Hi, this is Joseph with Rapid Fire Home Buyers. Do you have a house that's costing you too much time and money? Maybe a rental house, an inherited house you don't know what to do with, or the house you're living in that you just can't keep up with. We buy property in any condition and any price range all over the Southeast. Sell your house as is for cash with no repairs, no fees, and no commissions. If you're even thinking of selling your house, before you call a realtor, give us a call for a free cash offer. Call 859-695-3875. The man of the hour has arrived. The sampling is the best. Better than all the rest. Let the journey begin. Welcome back to a special Friday Let's Talk Kentucky. I'm Sherelle Roberts. We're here with the Let's Talk team. And joining us at the table is Amanda Jason with Elizabeth's Village. Yay! Welcome Yay. to the table. Thank you for having me. We are awesome. so glad to have you here. I'm glad to be here. I'm telling you, you have such an amazing organization that you work with. Tell us, what is Elizabeth's Village? That's a really great question. Elizabeth's Village is a nonprofit located in Georgetown, Kentucky that is just a group of widely passionate women staff members and board members who walk alongside women transitioning out of homelessness and helping women who are surviving domestic violence. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So what's the primary reason that you see people coming to you for services? The primary reason, actually, there are two. 
primary reasons. One is that women face homelessness for various reasons. Mm. Women and women and their children are struggling in this economy. Mm. You know, financially, rent is skyrocketing and yes. affordability of buying a house is at all time highs. And so trying to find a stable place to live for them mm. sometimes can be really difficult. And mm -hmm. that actually will coincide with careers and jobs. Mm. And so in a job market where We've seen unemployment be down. It makes it hard for us to find stable, long-term, beneficial jobs oh. that provide great salaries and benefits. Oh, so sure. those are the things that really cause homelessness. And then on the domestic violence front, you know, relationships are great, but sometimes they're not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes mm -hmm. what happens behind closed doors is really difficult to talk about. But at some point. Um, the woman decides to leave, mm -hmm. and we like to walk alongside of her and support her as she makes the transition into her own life with self-sufficiency and positivity. So important. Amanda, tell well, us about the education and resources that you provide to women in terms of financial planning and career coaching. So we're really proud to be um, offering a service where with the women who are transitioning um, in our transition home, we offer career coaching and career development skills so that they go into their self-sufficiency, proud to have a job that they're happy about, a job that provides a salary and benefits. So we focus on that. And then we also offer financial literacy so that when they do start living in a sustainable, um, positive home, that they can actually continue to provide for themselves and envision and build goals and dreams for themselves so they don't just survive they thrive. Yeah. Oh, Amanda, fantastic. you all are doing such amazing work. We only have a couple of seconds left, but tell folks about your your where your website is and how they can support, especially like with these little coffee yes. and candles and all the great things y'all are doing. What is the website? Absolutely. So we are elizabethsvillage.org and we also have a Facebook page. We would love for everyone to come and visit. Um, October is the Domestic Violence Awareness Month and so we've got a tremendous amount of programming around that. Our team is working really hard to get ready for the night market, which is October 27th, oh, yeah. where we will be sharing our candles, which is made by the individuals in our um, transitional home. And we will also be selling coffee, which is provided by City Roastery. We have the Elizabeth's Village blend. Well, thank you awesome. so much for sharing thank with you. us, and thank you for being here. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you. So thank much. you. Everybody, stay with us. Coming up after the break, we're going to talk about that one trip chip challenge, and we're going to highlight our woman we're talking about. Let's Talk Kentucky is brought to you by Critchfield Meat. Now some breaking news. FanDuel is coming to Kentucky. America's number one sports book, FanDuel, is going live soon. I'm pumped. Let's go. America's number one sports book is headed to Kentucky. Get $100 in bonus bets when you sign up today. Want a flatter, tighter tummy? Then check out new Ab EX from Sono Bello. Doctor, after my pregnancies, my body just never bounced back. I had this stomach overhang that made me really self-conscious. It's not your fault. That stubborn fat and excess skin is very difficult to get rid of with diet and exercise alone. That's exactly why I went to Sonobello. I really trust their team of experts, and I finally got the flat stomach I had always wanted. Introducing Ab EX from Sonobello. Remove fat and lose excess skin permanently in just one visit. Ab EX is a great alternative to a tummy tuck because that overhang you mentioned becomes flat and tight fast with minimal downtime. Schedule your free, no obligation consultation now to learn more about Ab EX by Sono Bello. Call 1-888-507-8988 or go to sonobello.com. I'm John Morgan. If you've been injured in a car accident, call Pound Law from your cell phone. Morgan & Morgan, Pound Law, that's all. Bad credit, bankruptcy, or just bad luck? Come see Jerry Delaney at North Broadway Auto Sales, where he guarantees everybody rides. North Broadway Auto Sales is Lexington's largest buy-here-pay-here -here lot with the cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs you want with the financing you need to get rolling again. Turn your luck around. Visit North Broadway Auto Sales on New Circle Road and leave here today in a top-quality pre-owned vehicle. No matter the reason, turn your luck around. Jerry guarantees at North Broadway on New Circle Road, everybody rides. ABC 36, on your side.
welcome back. It's time for What in the World is Trending, and this is definitely a what in the world. So a snack company that has a chip called Pocky, and Pocky is the subject of a one-chip challenge. It's a super-duper-duper duper spicy tortilla chip. It comes in a box shaped like a coffin. You put the whole thing in your mouth to see if you can survive the heat, and if you're so inclined, you make a little video of it and put it on social media. Well, kids started doing it. <laughs> and they were seriously injuring themselves, ending up in the hospital and dying. Now the company says, oops, we better stop selling this. What? Oh my gosh, I can oh actually my see myself trying this. I mean, back in the day, but like right now, if I could do just like a quarter chip challenge, <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> I would do it. You know, if you are marketing a product that could potentially kill someone, why would you, number one, what are you marketing? Mm. Oh, who are you marketing it to? And why in the world would you even want to market a product like that? I Crazy. don't get it. Crazy. Who are the ad wizards who came up with this one? That's <laughs> what I want to know, and they need to be stopped. And you know what? I get them pulling it off the shelves, but if you're grown, 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 like 21 or over, and you ate this chip and it burned your face off, I do not <laughs> want you suing them because you should know better. Amen All right? to that. Yes. All Amen. right, let's check in on the poll before we wrap it up here. So the question was, is are political commercials going too far? 100% of you say yes. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Obvious. Take that. Yeah. Obviously, obviously, Listen obviously. Up. Listen up. All right. And now let's highlight our woman worth talking about. Let's roll on through it. Today's woman we're talking about is Lisa Atkins. She's the president and CEO of Bluegrass Community Foundation. The Bluegrass Community Foundation, um, which started back in 2009, they work to help organizations and individuals in the community who want to give back to do so. They connect your money, they connect your money with great causes. And so Lisa Atkins, folks there say that this is in her heart. She has um, just just a heart for doing this, has mm. a history of doing this, um, and is doing the work super well. So Lisa Atkins, thank you for all that you do over at the Bluegrass Community Foundation. You yes. are a woman worth talking about. All right. Thank you so much. I know. They do so such good work. Oh, they do. Really, really do. Yeah. They do. Important. Well, everybody, happy Friday. Get out there, have some fun, and we will see you on Monday. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Have a good weekend.